Good morning, Jennifer Gray. Thank you for joining me here live in Dallas, Texas on the Valder Beebe Show, oh, broadcasting I, on a global I, platform. I just want to change my name to Valder Beebe. Oh, what a lovely compliment. That's a gorgeous name. Is that your real name? That's my real name. It's you, a Dutch and a German name. I was going to say, are you German? Name. Oh, it's so yeah, good. I acquired the last name through marriage, but it is my real name. Now, believe me, it was not that cool in high school to be Valder. Mm, so good now. It is. It's a delicious you should see, thing. We should see now. what I'm picturing. I'm just picturing this statuesque, like, Valkyrian goddess. Oh, keep going. Keep going. I, I, right. I, I, so am good. I right? I can so see you. I, I've been looking in a lens, but I'm just picturing just uh, like almost a Marvel Jennifer, superhero. Just, oh, my goodness. He's like a Grecian goddess. I love that. Thank you. Jennifer Gray, I want to thank you so much for joining us here to talk about Red Oaks. We, of course, you know, you have an adoring public. We put your name out on Facebook yesterday on our Facebook page, and people love you from being with Patrick Swayze to whatever leading man that that is lucky enough to get you. Oh, you're so sweet. Thank you. That's I had no idea. I'm, that makes me happy. You do. You have a very, very big presence. Now you're going to be on Red Oak. Tell me about this. Cause is this an, something new for you? Well, Red Oaks is... Um, brand new series that they developed at Amazon and it's on Amazon Prime and we dropped all 10 episodes. We did the pilot last year and then we shot nine more. So there's 10 episodes of half hour of I think some of the freshest, most cinematic, it really feels like a movie in terms of quality, the writing, the cinematography, the acting, the music is incredible. And it's a beautiful kind of journey back in time to a more innocent time where, but it's never making fun of or spoofing the 80s. I mean, the costumes spoof themselves, but the costume designer was so gifted that she kept it always real. So it was almost like a documentary that we went back in time, had this time travel, and went back to this time when it was a more innocent time and a coming of age that takes place in the summer at this Jewish country club. And my son plays this, I mean, not my real son, my Craig, Craig Roberts, who is this beautiful young Welsh actor, this brilliant guy. He plays my son and he's about to, you know, leave home and, you know, figuring out what he wants to do with his life. And of course, so are we my husband and I, because my husband has, my husband Richard Kind, the wonderful Richard Kind, has a heart attack in the pilot. And in that moment is, it's kind of the inciting incident which breaks all protocol and it's the truth is said, the things that people say on their deathbed. And he doesn't die, but then we now have to live with the truth being expo exposed and expressed. And then I think what it does is it's working on all of us unconsciously. What do we want to do with the rest of our lives? And what's not working? And why would we continue to do that just because we have when we have this opportunity to all of a sudden see this isn't working and be out of denial? So it's like the denial's ripped off and everyone's struggling with the devil they know versus the devil they don't know. And knowing that, wow, now the cat's out of the bag, what are we going to do? Had you, as you think of your career, some things I did, I, I, I can't see in my 10, 20 years. Had you ever thought of being that I would do the role of the protagonist mother? Had you ever thought of that? I never think about anything in those terms. I think of it like a continuum. I think that if I'm lucky enough to find myself in company of people who I respect, and am turned on by their talent and activated and enough that I would want to, you know, leave my, my role at home. It had to be pretty good. So I really don't care. Like I always say to my managers, I don't care the size of the part. There are almost no lines of mine in the first two episodes, which is all I read when I took the job. I just knew I wanted to be in their company. I knew I wanted to be part of something that I respected. So for me, I don't really think about age or size of part. I just think 
I just want to be playing with those kids. Is it because you created such a strong platform for your career early on in the 80s that you're probably at the point of where you can make that kind of choice? I can choose to be in this film or I can choose not to be in this film that's offered me? Is that a part of your strength and your power? Mm, I wish I could say that. That is not the truth. I believe that I am fortunate enough to be married to my husband who's working on the you know, Marvel Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. show and as a result I've been given the incredible uh, luxury of being able to stay home with our child and my husband has the incredible luxury of shooting a show in LA which is so rare now and that we can be all together every night and my daughter has somebody to pick her up at school and make her breakfast and do her homework with her if she needs it, not that she asks me anymore because it's all too smart now for me, but in my mind, you know, but that she would have, a, you know, at least one parent putting her to bed every night. That to me is what I was waiting for my whole life. So I have the luxury of my husband doing the lion's share of the work so that I could stay home and do that work. And then this show starts just as his goes on hiatus in the summer. And she's getting out of school, so I miss about a week of school for her. And the rest of it is they can come to me on the East Coast. And uh, so it's just kind of, I, it was very, it's, it was a little too good to pass up. You know what I mean? It's a very good, great place to be in. I can mm -hmm. identify with that. Let me ask you this. I have a Facebook question. Mm -hmm. uh, this comes from Aaron. He says, uh, I loved you in the Cotton Club. Oh, that's my first and job. And I loved you in Dirty Dancing. Do you think you will ever, there will ever be a remake of Ferris Bueller's Day Off? Good question. Hmm, that's interesting. Um, I know my husband is doing a reading tonight of Ferris Bueller's Day Off um, at oh, LACMA, really? I believe, yeah. Yeah, um, with um, Jason Reitman, and they're just doing a reading. He does readings of different old movies, um, and I know Jason's a big fan of Ferris Bueller. Maybe he's thinking about it. I don't know. I mean, I wouldn't touch it. If I were anybody, I wouldn't want to touch that movie. I think that what John Hughes did and what Matthew Broderick did in that movie was just about perfect. So, Yeah, that's kind of like... I don't think you want to mess with perfection. There's some things you don't want to mess with, and that was perfection. Yeah. Jennifer, what is the best thing, and I'm going to let you go, what is the best thing about being a part of Amazon's Red Oaks? Oh, everything. I think the writers and the actors and the fact that they're making, you know, Joe Lewis and Jill Arthur, those guys at Amazon are making, they're making material that is not been done. I mean, transparent has changed television forever. They are creating, they're letting auteurs, they're letting real artists make art and give them so much more freedom. And I think that it's just become a different landscape where you can cast whoever you want and you can do whatever you want and everything's changing. So it's a pretty exciting time to be on television. It is. Sounds like old Hollywood a little bit. I like that. Jennifer Gray, you were a delight to speak with. And what about I you? Privileged. Aren't you a delight? Thank you so very, very much. Yeah. And I'm so excited about Amazon's Red Oak. And of course, where do you want us to go so we can watch it and we can watch you? On Amazon Prime. You have to be a Prime member. And then you can also shop for your groceries and, you know, get extra That's detergent right. and things that are too heavy <laughs> and you don't want to have to carry them. Just have them delivered. <laughs> Jennifer Gray, thank you for being my guest on the Valder BB Show. And I say, like I told you earlier, you are truly, truly love out there in mm. Internet land, wherever those people are. You know, they love you. They love you. I got to tell you, they're awesome. You're awesome also. Thank you for being Thanks. my guest and be blessed and much success with Red Oak. Thank you. I wish the same to you and all of our Facebook friends and all the people have sent me so much well wishes this past week, especially. I really appreciate it. You've been so kind. Thank Thanks. you.